The ocean is often thought of as a silent wilderness, but under the surface is a symphony of sound. Sound that marine creatures rely on for their survival, to find food, to communicate, to navigate. The light vanishes meters below the surface, so the sound is really what supports life in water. But humans are increasingly polluting the ocean with noise, which is posing a threat to creatures from the smallest to the most majestic. Now we are facing a global issue that affects thousands of species. This man is at the forefront of the science of ocean sound. He's working to dial down the volume in a bid to protect marine life around the world. In his lab in Barcelona, Michel André is conducting an experiment with an artificial ear. So this is uh, our hydrophone, which is the artificial ear that is able to capture all the sounds that will send them to our artificial brain, the electronics that is inside this housing. The underwater microphone is being put through its paces before it's dropped into the Mediterranean Sea. The device is part of an ambitious experiment to better understand how human sound is affecting marine life. Our perception of sound in the ocean is biased. Our ear is not made to listen underwater. Our ear is made to listen in air. So for years and years and years, we really thought that the uh, sea was a world of silence. Michel's team is carrying out the biggest ever sound survey of the world's ocean, dropping hydrophones in multiple locations and at various depths. This combination of artificial ear, artificial brain plus transmission is something that has given us, as human beings, a sixth sense that we didn't have. Now we can listen into the ocean as if we were dolphins, but also we can be anywhere. Sound is essential to marine life because light doesn't travel further than a few hundred meters underwater. Thousands of species use it to communicate, to find their way around, to spot their next meal, or ensure they're not someone else's. It is a harmony of sound that um, lived there for millions of years. Then, as human beings, we started to introduce different sounds, artificial sounds, through our activities only a hundred years ago. So this is really recent that we have started to invade with our sound. Noise pollution is now recognized as a major threat to ocean life. Everything that we do in the ocean introduces sound that may have an effect on the environment. There are more than 50,000 container ships that sail every day around the world. Unlike many other threats to the ocean, noise pollution is invisible, which means it's often overlooked. But in 2002, the world started to take notice. 14 beaked whales stranded on the holiday beaches of Lanzarote and Fuerteventura. It was later discovered that multiple ships and submarines were operating in the area, using sonar, pulses of sound used to detect objects underwater. And this is the first time that we could associate as a um, cause-to-effect relationship that a noise introduced by the Navy sonar was leading to the stranding of these whales. Whales talk to each other through a complex language of clicks and whistles. These sounds help them to navigate and communicate. Man-made noises like sonar can disrupt this communication and disorientate them. We know how sensitive people are to whales and dolphins, uh, totem animals, and uh, they were seeing them washed uh, on, on shore by this human activity for the first time. So uh, this really helped understanding that this noise could have a detrimental effect. Since this incident, the use of sonar has been associated with a large number of whale strandings around the world. But while beached whales continue to grab the headlines, Michel was keen to understand if other creatures were experiencing the same fate. A group of giant squids uh, were found stranded uh, on the beach. The post-mortem analysis didn't show any cause of the death. What he was about to discover 
would change scientists' understanding of the effects of ocean noise pollution. This group of experts realized that a geophysics uh, experiment using a high energy sound was performed a few days before this event. Oil prospecting ships had unknowingly disturbed the ecosystem below them. We decided in our laboratory to recreate this uh, situation and uh, we found this massive acoustic trauma when we exposed this animal to sound. Although squid don't have ears, their bodies contain small organs called statocysts, which are lined with noise-sensitive hairs. In his lab, Michel and his team discovered that even low-intensity sounds destroy these hairs and knock out the squid's balance. We went through uh, the idea that it was only affecting a few species, the whales and the dolphins, to invertebrates and fish, and we are speaking about thousands of species. So we cannot anymore consider the effect of noise as species-specific, but consider it as a global effect to the whole marine environment. This revelation has been the driving force behind Michel's plan to map the soundscape of the entire ocean. So these, there are shrimps. This is the sound of a ship passing by. So far, he has built and installed 150 listening platforms around the world. What we do is we, we want to identify all the sounds, right? We don't want to uh, leave anyone uh, a part of this, so we want to know everything. To do that, we need to train the system to recognize the features that belong to one or another source. Every sound is being labelled and stored in what is now the world's biggest database of ocean sound. Using artificial intelligence, the sounds in the acoustic library can be identified as natural or man-made, and the effects they're having on marine life can be assessed. We aim at building trends that reflect the biodiversity of an area. If we detect an external event that could be a ship noise or other human activity that will influence the area in a negative way, we will see how this trend changes because of this external factor. Researchers are trying to pin down the damage that human activity is having on the ocean, and they're revealing some concerning trends. Noise pollution is most prominent in the Northern Hemisphere. Every decade, noise from shipping has doubled in intensity, which has been seen to have an effect on certain species of whale, reducing their ability to communicate with each other by about 60%. Air guns are the most common method used to map the ocean floor for oil and gas exploration. Their impacts have been detected 4,000 kilometers from the source and have been linked to multiple mass strandings. The South Pacific is the part of the ocean with the least human noise. The good news is that unlike other forms of pollution, the impact from noise is short-lived. If we compare sound to other sources of pollution, as soon as you switch off the sound, the effect is gone. But not all noise is bad, and Michel and his team are trying to ascertain how humans can best carry out important work while limiting its effect on the ocean. Michel is now working with marine-based industries to help them reduce ocean noise pollution. In our laboratory, we try to understand this effect on, on the marine environment so we can provide the industry that operates at sea with uh, these uh, tools that will allow them to operate in the same way with a limited effect on the environment. Solutions include noise reduction technologies to lessen the sound of deep sea drilling in the renewables sector and potential alternatives to sonar. Michel André's research is shifting science's understanding of noise pollution. It's just the beginning, but his work could fundamentally change the way in which humans operate on the ocean and coexist with marine creatures in the future. Hi, I'm Claire and I directed this film. If you want to learn more about some of the greatest challenges facing the ocean and the people looking to solve them, then click on the link opposite. And if you want to watch more of the Protector series, then click on the other link. Please subscribe and thank you for watching.